Hi everyone, welcome to the Hanya Show. Today we will be discussing about parenting. And for today's guest, I have uh, Charu Agrawal. Charu Agrawal is an internationally certified native and solution focused therapist and educationist, former principal of many school, director, life mentor, and wellness coach. She's attached to a German NGO called Shishu Mandir International, of which W I C C I. Recently, from H E T S, she was honored the Guru Agra Summit 2021. She feels that everything is in mind and learning has no age. She believes that the communication is very important, and we all need someone to listen to us. She follows this and and is open to uh, listening to everyone promising keep it, uh, keeping it a secret. She's very passionate about children and loves to give tips on parenting. She believes that children are happy and we will have a happy society. She is spreading awareness on parenting through webinars and her Facebook page name is Charu's Parenting Tips. Welcome, Charu. Thank you, Hanya. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you. And today we're going to get to know all about parenting because you will be talking from many perspectives today. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for my first question, okay, yeah. here my question. My first question is, as an educator, how does parenting affect schooling? Okay, so you know what? Many parents, they wonder that what effect will parenting style have on children in the school? Because they believe that only the teachers and the school environment is responsible for the child's behavior. And they have no role to play. You know, psychologists have identified uh, four different parenting styles and the impact of this on the child's behavior, emotional health and educational outcomes also. In fact, parenting style can affect multiple aspects of a child's life. Some of them are self-esteem, self-discipline, motivation, behavior, socialization. Out of this, one of the types is called as permissive parenting. These type of parents, you know, they have very few expectations from the children as far as their behavior goes. They are uh, generally nurturing, communicative with the children, and they treat their children more like a friend than as a parent. But the problem, uh, and this is um, uh, mainly called as the poorest form of the parenting. And the uh, problem with these kids are that these kids have poor regulation of emotions. They are defined when someone challenges their behavior. They may give up easily when things get difficult. They may display antisocial behaviors also. So when a child is displaying all these behaviors, he may have difficulty accepting the educational challenges. They will struggle with the teachers and the administration in the school. And they will also have a trouble adapting socially with their peers while in school. Other type of parenting is called as authoritarian parents. As the name itself says that these parents are very autocratic. They have set up certain rules for the children and they expect the children to follow those rules. And if those rules are not followed, they really give them uh, punishment because they believe that uh, spare the rod and spoil the child. Okay. And uh, what happens and they expect the children to follow whatever they are saying without the children having the right to question the parents. If the child wants to ask something, the parents will say, no, I said so. So it has to happen. So what will happen with these kids is that these children, they are normally very obedient and proficient. They are getting very good marks. But when we uh, look into their happiness factor, they are very low in their happiness factor. The social competence and self-esteem is very low. They are quite anxious, I'll say, or unhappy. They cannot handle frustration well. They will do well in school because they cannot rock the boat in the house. And they cannot take a risk-taking behavior. They cannot engage themselves in all these things. Wow, Next I thing, didn't know that. I remember, yeah. we, I remember I took parenting back when I was in high school. I was in grade 11 that time. I was 16. And some of the parenting styles we're talking about, I remember reading those. You're saying there's also two more because there's four types of uh, parenting. Yes. Yeah, two more. Would you like to explain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next type is called as authoritative parent. This is also somewhat similar to authoritarian parent. But the difference over here is that here this parenting style is much more democratic. 
they will set up rules but at the same time they will listen to their children also okay they will answer the questions of their pair of their kids they'll provide them warmth feedback and adequate support also and if the child is not able to meet their expectations then these parents are more nurturing and forgiving rather than punishing the child they'll apply their logical consequences when the child is not able to meet the reasonable demands of the behavior so when the kids are raised in this kind of an environment these kids are really pleasant or happy they are capable they are successful they have strong belief in their own personal abilities and they are independent they have a good sense of self control self discipline and motivation and they have very well developed social skills they will do very well in schools also and homes also everywhere and they will always display a good friendship and display appropriate respect for the authority so these kids are loved by everyone the last type is called as uninvolved parents okay here as you can as the name itself says that these parents they are not worried about anything what they feel is that my job is to give food and shelter to my child and i am doing that apart from that i have no role to play in guidance or structure or rules or even support the, uh, in in extreme cases some of the parents they even neglect the needs of their children okay this is also this is ranked as the uh, lowest across all the domains so kids of these families they will have low self esteem they will lack self control they are less competent than their peers they will have low socialization skills sometimes they are self sufficient with regards to survival skills and they cannot often lead to high level position education and positive educational outcomes they will exhibit aggressiveness or problem behaviors and these kids from uninvolved homes you know they'll do both in school academically as well as socially so they also will display behavioral problems in school and will have problem accepting the authority from the school so the studies have shown that the parenting affects the academic achievements behavioral issues of the child i hope i have answered your question properly that was that was very informative and my next question is what are your suggestions on parent child relationships see hania i always say and i believe that becoming parents is easy but parenting is very difficult it's the most fulfilling job that we will always have and is never without challenges parents they want what is whatever is best for their child and a strong parent child relationship can always help lead to for better outcomes for the children this relationship that nurtures the physical emotional and social development of the child the relationship it lays the foundation for the child's behavior personality life choices and you know there is no one size fits all when it comes to parenting because we need to change and adapt as our children are growing so some of the tips what i would suggest to improve this relationship with your child is that parents should treat every opportunity whatever they are getting to talk with their child to connect with their child they should be warm in those in their expressions they should give that eye connect they should smile and encourage that interaction the children need structure and guidance so when we talk to our children about what i expect from them then they will understand i should as a parent i should understand or acknowledge my child's feelings i should tell him that i understand and i should reassure him that i am always there with you where whatever is the problem as a parent you should help to uh, help your child to solve the problem be a good role model when you work with your children to find solutions they learn how to deal with difficulties in an appropriate way so instead of giving solutions work with your child to find solutions of course we all love our children but everyone loves to be uh, loves to hear this on daily basis that i love you i trust you everyone feels motivated and charged up so a simple i love you or i trust you on daily basis from the parents it also helps to strengthen the difference i agree yeah. and uh, play is also a very important uh, to play in the child's development you know young children they develop many skills through the power of play so as as long as we are playing we are not only developing the relationship with our child but it is also helping our child build up his language skills emotions creativity and social skills every day as a parent you should take out 10 minutes to just talk to your child while keeping all the technology aside and establishing good communication skills sit together as a family 
and have uh, lunch or dinner whatever it is so and have an have a conversation over there that also helps a lot listening we always say that listen carefully you know listening means that i'm i am getting attached to you so that connection is getting built up and when we are listening we should also try and see the things from the child's perspective and i should give respect to whatever my child is saying if you as a parent if you have got more than one child then you should try spending time with both your children equally this quality time also makes a very big difference i hope it answers your question yes that was a lot of information and a lot of good points and i was going to ask you how to improve parenting but i think you also mentioned that in there so i'm moving on to my oh, uh, I, I i would i would love to emphasize over here because yeah I, you could talk about improving parenting like what do you suggest yeah you know so basically what i would like to say over here is you know that there is no perfect rule for parenting nobody can say in this world that definitely this rule has worked for me this rule will also work for you because each and every child is unique so the parenting style is also based on uh, the nature of your child so the first thing is what all the parents need to understand is that your child is not you your child is not your mirror image your child is not your extension so stop making your child your mirror image second point which i would like to emphasize over here is that as parents we are very fond of the overs that is overfeeding overprotection overvaluing overclothing and overprotection it uh, tends to destroy the need for the child to call on his coping skills and lack of awareness for of the range of this coping skills and the lack of use of these skills which will make them dormant and eventually extinct in the child so parents need to always keep in mind that they have to prepare their child for the road and they and not the road for the child next is stop labeling your child and listening and following blindly to your friends or your relatives or even the teachers because you know what potential your child has and you need to believe and nurture that talent nobody can excel in life with various kinds of labels and every action has an equal and opposite reaction so if a child is going wrong somewhere we need to sit and analyze ourselves that where did we go wrong as a parent never make the child feel underestimated the self esteem of the child should always be kept high parents should know that their tone of voice their body language their expressions everything is being absorbed by their kids their words and actions are, are de helping develop the self esteem of the child so they should choose their words carefully and be compassionate they should enhance the growth mindset of the child uh you have to love your child unconditionally you have to praise the child's efforts when they fail you have to make room for failure also if the child fails have an open discussion regarding the failure at that point of time you need to tell tell your child that you have not failed this process has failed so you are always supposed to give a constructive feedback i understand that as parents it is very difficult for us to say no to our children but uh, but i would say that we should try avoiding the usage of saying no to the children you know what happens is this no has to be put across in a different way for example if a child is demanding for toys where he's got plenty of toys just instead of saying bluntly no ask the child why he needs it because already there are so many so you have to try and see that you are able to teach your child the difference between need and want if a True. child is and that is something we which we learn in business and marketing i remember reading that uh, in there yeah. the basic needs are always shelter and food and uh water air and all these things love and affection but wants are just the materialistic things that we want so that's hard to okay. duplicate and yeah. so, so if yeah, the child is able to understand this difference the child will always be a happy child yeah okay and you have to help your children uh, learn new skills emphasize a lot on life skills as a parent you need to create a safe space at home you know they should kid should be allowed to express themselves when they are angry or somewhat they should be uh, because everyone undergoes through all these emotions but they should be allowed to express those emotions and we should give less advice and model more confidence in the parents and uh, sorry in the children 
and if possible we should try to practice digital detox at least once a week and spend time with our children give i agree hug- not everything should always be on digital it should be sometimes without it too yes and, and now, you know, this yeah. hug, hug of your child i i really love doing that and i have seen that this giving a hug it not only gives the receiver um, it does not only makes the receiver feel good but even the person who is giving the hug also feels calmer and feels very good and feels secure so g- try to give hugs to your kids also listen to your kids as i always say that and when the kids are speaking don't interrupt them don't judge them just listen to what they have to say at least let whatever is there inside them let it come off let it become empty a uh, house has so many jobs cho- chores to be done involve the kids in all those chores even a uh, toddler also can be taught to pick up the toys and keep it in its respective place so if from the very basic age itself if you start teaching those kids all these things then they feel that yes i am an important member of the family and my decisions also make a difference so i am important and try to make your home as a no hitting zone that no i am if you don't do this i'll give you one nice spank on your face or on your back there are other ways of disciplining your child so try to make your home as a no hitting zone and as a parent we always have the habit of only finding faults in our kids apart from that if i say let's reverse the process and say ki oh today you did this good today you have made your bed beautiful you've kept your tiffin box in the wash wash area like very little, little steps right yes. yes little little step oh you have finished your food excellent that motivates the child to do well because that is becoming as an incentive for him to become uh, do well and next very important time you know as parents we all keep on saying struggling with this me time that i don't have my time i am struggling with my kids but and they parents we feel that i have sacrificed so much i have not done anything and i am a tired person but kids never asked you so instead and what kind of message are we telling our children that you are not important taking care of yourself is not important so on the other side if you say that no even i need to take care of myself and i also need to focus on my hobbies and everything else so that way you are creating your me time and you are also teaching your child that this me time is very important so if possible create a family me time that where everyone is doing whatever they love to do and the child also understand this importance of me time and the family also comes close that is that is really good uh, ways of improving parenting moving on to my next question is what advice to give to new and emerging parents okay so you know what first and foremost i would like to say is that the child didn't ask the parents to bring him into this world as parents you chose to become parents so your role as parenting because starts from the time the mother conceives the mental emotional state of the mother plays an important role in the child's life and the moment you chose to become parent you all god also gave you an innate ability of parenting so you need to trust that innate ability okay because parents instinctively know what their kids need and if a parent starts observing his child very minutely starts listening to the inner deep voice they will have all the answers instead of today's google devta ke paas ja kar ke to try to find out the answers so try to und- listen to yourself or if help is needed go to a specialist because what happens is there is so much information available on the net and we do not know which one is relevant for your child so when you are not confident as a parent you are passing on that in um, incapability to your children also don't do that second thing is you know this uh, the behavior of the child is dependent upon both the genes as well as the environment so environment also you have to take it and uh, apart from that in environment the gene, meaning like the atmosphere and like yeah, how how the environment how all environment. like these things right yes, yeah yes, that yes. that also reminds me because i remember reading that back in in my parenting course that environment is a big factor genes is one of them but it's like how your child is de- uh, develops their behavior within the environment like let's yes. say it was really good if it wasn't that good all those things matter i agree with you so in genes also no we have both positive and negative traits 
So this meditation actually helps to open up the positive traits. So from the very basic age itself, if you try to teach your children, and I have practiced this as a principle also, that if a child has done something wrong, instead of scolding the child, I have just asked the child to sit quietly and close his eyes for 10 minutes. The mind becomes calmer, the child gets focused, and it has really worked wonders. So as parents, even you can try that. And next is very, very important is the, for communication, there are two ways. Verbal and non-verbal. We focus a lot on the verbal communication, but we do not focus on the non-verbal communication. So as parents, we need to focus. has a big factor in there because you can't tell if the person is scared or if the person is nervous. All these things matter. I agree. Yes. So as a parent, you have to teach you have to teach the child to read the body language, to express emotions and feelings without fear. And, beca and because if you do not do this, again, this these uh, skills will also become unused and redundant. And the children will not be able to understand the non-verbal cues. Then, as I said earlier also, the parents have to understand that the child is a different soul, is not their extension. So they cannot uh, try, they should not try to fulfill their dreams through their children. They have to folk identify the talent of their child and nurture that one. Uh, focus on... Focus a lot on virtual on our life skills and teach the child that they should not never develop the habit of wearing the virtual mask, which we all elders do. And we should always be truthful. So let them tell their child that it is okay that if you are doing a mistake, but do not repeat that same mistake. Parents should teach their children how to face failures, rejections, how to handle vulnerability, you know, and one very important mantra is that success is to be measured by the amount of happiness, free time, physical and mental health, liking what they do, and then comes job title and salary. So this mantra, if the parents keep in mind, things will be much, much better. They should I teach. Agree. They should, yeah. I was going to say, um, okay, is there anything else you want to add? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would. You know, they should teach their children to maintain a happiness gratitude journal. They should teach their child to write, speak, visualize, listen, and feel those affirmations. This helps a lot for the child with the coping mechanisms when, because when the parents are not around, because lifelong, we are not going to be around with the kids. So this thing has to be taught. And next, uh, if possible, take out your children for unplanned trips. Because these unplanned trips also, they are teaching the child to deal with uncertainty. And to uh, next is teach the child that uh, uh, how to make them mentally strong. Tell them that there is no word as impossible. Impossible is I am possible. They should teach the child not to jump to conclusions, not assume. Learn to understand the other person's perspective also. And no decision is right or wrong. And if something goes wrong, learn to stay calm. Think with a cool head because the solution is always hidden in the problem. And the end, I would like to say that never forget that children do what we do rather than what we say. So treat your children the way you expect to be treated. Okay, that's amazing advice. And uh, my last question is, uh, would you like to share your social media handles where we can, where uh, everyone can uh, follow you or come to you for any advice or any consultation about parenting? Yes, you can You can do that. For that, I'll have to share my screen, I believe. Yes. Uh, just okay. let me just, uh, make you co-host. Just give me a minute. Okay. Yes. So where can uh, everyone follow you on tips? You mentioned Charles Parenting Tips. Yeah. Just a moment. So this is my page, Charu Parenting Tips. Are mm -hmm. you able to see it's yes. loading? It's loading. Can you see the page? Yes. Uh, I can't see the page, but I can see the screen. Can you see the page? Uh, no. no, I think it's opened up in a different window. Yeah, because uh, in my presentation, you will have only the link. So you okay. can just share the link and they can click on this link. And uh, then they can go to this Parenting Tips page where I write plenty, I've write i written plenty of articles on how, even on how to choose a school also because there are different different uh, types of schools especially uh, in India ICSE board, CBSE board, state board all and uh, international boards also 
so which board is good for your child also that also i have written articles on that i have written a lot um, on many things i have written articles uh main thing is abuse child abuse is a very important topic and there also i have written because parents always think abuse is only in one front that is sexual abuse but actually that is a myth apart from that there is abuse which is happening from the parent side only and abuse starts from home itself so when the parents will read all these articles they will understand that what i am trying to showcase so oh that's amazing yeah yeah just uh okay Hold on. Okay, and uh, thank you uh, so much, Charu, for coming on to the Hania Show. So everyone, make sure you follow Charu's uh, Facebook page, Charu's Parenting Tips, and for more information, go to Charu. And also, make sure you watch and subscribe to Hania Travels. There'll be another episode of the Hania Show coming uh, very soon. So watch and subscribe. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Hania, for inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you.